All right, folks, welcome to today's episode of the Real Estate Leadership Roundtable. Got a great guest today, Kristen Childers from the Austin, Texas area. Can't wait to have this conversation with her. But before we dive in today, I want to let you know if you're listening to this podcast and you're looking for a way to grow your team or grow your brokerage, I want you to go check out my totally free recruiting course that I created at freedom-builders.net. Um, totally free recruiting scripts, uh, drip campaigns, follow-up strategies, lead gen strategies, uh, the exact strategies that we've used to add 96 real estate agents to our team in the last 12 months. Totally free for you. Just go to freedom builders Net. Let's go ahead and dive in today. Kristen, thank you so much for being on here. I'm yeah, looking thanks for having me. Yeah. So, uh, you know, before we get to where you're at today, which I think is uh, a really uh, crucial step of this whole team building, uh, brokerage building kind of journey, just kind of rewind the clock for us a little bit. How did you even get in real estate and kind of what has that looked like up until this point? Yeah. So it's kind of a funny story. I've was in corporate America uh, for a while. I was in a executive leadership role and had a comfortable salary. And but I felt like I planted my flag and I was kind of ready to do the next best thing. Which I had so many people um, that knew me who always said, "You should try real estate. You should try real estate." And I always pushed it aside, pushed it aside. But um, an acquaintance of mine in another city had opened her own brokerage. And she had her name on a sign on a building. Um, and I drove past it and I thought, okay, that's what I want to do. <laughs> so I had this dream of having my own brokerage and I was going to have my name on a sign and, and all of this. So I entered into my real estate classes with a dream of um, Austin and Hill Country real estate. I didn't know it had to be group at the time. I was still very green, but Austin and Hill Country Real Estate was already born uh, before I had I was licensed as a realtor. So I got licensed, launched uh, my website, created my email. But as you know, you can't really start a group until you achieve a certain uh, you know level of success as an agent. So. I had to market and brand Keller Williams was the brokerage I chose in the beginning and had to market and brand Keller Williams before I could launch my own group. But as soon as I had reached the um, level that they require to, to launch a group, then Austin and Hill Country was officially logoed and, and launched. So, and uh, so that's where I'm at today. I'm Kristen with Austin and Hill Country Real Estate Group. Um, however, I am brokered by Tyfke Real Estate. I did make a brokerage change, but my um, branding stays the same because I do have my own group. I got you. So for you, it was more um, because I kind of see people that are in two boats on this. Um, some folks come into this knowing that they eventually want to have their own team or a group or a brokerage. And then we also have some people that, that like me, I didn't really want to, but I got to a point in production where I felt like I had to bring uh, people on board just to help me have kind of like the the work life balance you know that I wanted so I just wasn't working twenty four seven so for yeah. you it was more about you had a goal from the very beginning and that goal is still what you're working towards right now right that's right yeah, yeah. and it and it evolves you know it it's funny because before you're really in it you you can create some dreams and goals but then you you're like oh wait I didn't realize all of that so. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I don't want to have my own brokerage, which is why I became a group. Um, so there's benefits. I get a lot of the benefits that I was looking for, uh, being a team lead without having, um, so much of the responsibility and, and, and the responsibility of having the resources and the systems, all of that's not on me because my brokerage is able to provide that. So I get to be this perfect middleman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're taking what somebody else has built and you're just leveraging what they've already built to uh, to provide value for yourself and other people, right? I mean, it's kind of yeah. like the, the way things are going. It's getting, uh, it seems to be a further divide between the haves and the have-nots. And uh, these things it takes to run a brokerage or run a team just getting more and more expensive. So hopping in mm -hmm. on somebody else's existing, you know, systems is, uh, is a popular way of doing it right now. It is. So, so let's go uh, to the moment then because – 
Uh, you know, one thing I, I, I loved about the conversation we had earlier for the folks that are listening or watching is, is uh, Kristen actually called me today and was like, are you sure you've got the right person? Cause I'm like, I'm not this big team leader. I'm not this mega producer. So like, are you, are you sure you got the right person? And, 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 and I think uh, the one reason why I like having people like Kristen on here is because she's in that part of, of her uh, entrepreneur journey that we would call the messy middle. Um, and she referred to it that earlier where you got a team, but you're still producing and you're kind of in that middle part between not having enough agents that you're out of production but also now having some extra responsibility for running, you know, a, a team and, and helping other people, you know, achieve success in real estate. So what have been uh, from the time you were a solo agent to, to running a group now, what are some of the challenges that you would say um, are, are something that maybe you didn't realize or maybe it's been bigger? Because there's a lot of people listening and watching to this podcast that are thinking about making that jump. So what would be some advice you would give them? on what they need to be prepared for when they get ready to make that jump from being a solo agent to either doing a team or doing a brokerage. Yeah. Um, so the, what I'd like to start with is sort of, I did something right. So we'll start with that <laughs> branding, branding my own, uh, real estate group and making sure that there was some brand awareness helped a lot. It helped me, um, gained some recognition from some agents. I had agents who wanted to join my group as soon as, as, soon as it was formed. So something that went really right was, um, you know, just being in the market and being recognizable in the market. However, um, so with that, I was able to fill some spots on my team right away, just right out of the gate. Come on board, let's do this. And, um, and I, thought that I did the best I could vetting agents and making sure that they fit the, the, you know, vision that I had for my team. And, um, so brought them on board. And what I learned really quickly is agents have a lot of motivation. They definitely have this vision, but there's a big gap between the vision and the reality. And a lot of agents struggle really, really hard to turn the vision into reality. And I really needed producers. I didn't want to just fill spots on my team with people who wanted to really walk their dog and go shopping at Target, but call themselves a realtor. I needed producers and, um, and, and I didn't get producers. I, I ended up getting people who loved the idea, but didn't really want to do the work. Um, but in that process, I also realized that I hadn't really built a solid foundation of systematic processes that I wanted my people to follow. Because at the end of the day, that is the brand. I worked so hard for it to be recognizable. And now if I'm going to spread that out and give other people the opportunity to have my brand, I needed them to, to follow the process that I had in place. But I had not, it's in my brain and not on paper. So... <laughs> So yeah. that was a challenge. So what are some of those things then that like were really important to you as far as them following, you know, your, your kind of group's way of doing it? What are some of those things that you would say um, that, that, that maybe they weren't following, but maybe now it sounds like you've kind of done a better job of providing that format for them to follow? What would be a couple examples in your arena? Professionalism in, in the industry. So uh, it, it is really important to me that, we don't look at this as, you know, a little part-time job or this thing that I do for fun. Like for, for me and what I want for my group is people to think of this as a professional career and present yourselves professionally. Um, and I'll give an example. Uh, I had somebody who wanted to hold an open house, but um, she thought it would be a good idea to bring her son to the open house. He was sort of young and she thought it would be fun for him and you know he would be a good conversation piece for people coming in and and I thought well that's you know you don't typically bring your son to the office when you're you know at work and this is a you know this would be your workplace so I didn't feel like that was appropriate um and then I have a, a systematic approach for listings and it's really important to me that we provide a, a quality of service that really stands out because uh, in the real estate industry, you know, I've talked to so many clients who say, well, I had somebody come put a for sale sign in my front yard and they left. Like I, 
you know, I think real estate agents get a bad rap sometimes when people don't come with a full level of service. And so I do have a very systematic approach that I follow. Um, it starts with the meeting. You know, we, we have a walkthrough of the home. We talk about home preparation. There are certain items that I provide as assistance to the home preparation. It kind of helps them get the ball rolling because sometimes clients are stuck. They don't know where to start. So anyway, it's just sort of this like step-by-step -step process, start to finish that at the end of that, the client feels like, wow, like not only golly, look at this commission, but they're like, we should give you more. You did so much for us. That's how I wanted to be at the end of the transaction. And so I didn't have that on paper. I just had that in my brain. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, you know, um, just going back, you know, I've failed miserably uh, in a couple areas uh, since I did my thing. And, and it's very similar to what to what you're talking about here is is I had standards for myself, like when I was a producing agent, but I didn't always hold people to the same standard uh, when it was them out there doing it. And now, you know, that's kind of a little bit unfair uh, for them to do it exactly the way that I did. Uh, I did it. But we certainly had some folks that we knew. 30 days into their real estate career, they weren't going to make it. And instead of just being honest with them and kind of putting them out of their misery, we, we kept them on board because it made our team and it made our brokerage look bigger on paper. And it was one more agent to, uh, to increase our agent count. And so I, I would say it sounds like a very similar um, kind of spot that you were at, um, mm -hmm. you know, just bringing on folks who truly aren't committed to the business yeah. Um, and, and commitment might look different for different people. Um, you know, we're okay with bringing in, you know, uh, part-time agents on our team, as long as they still fulfill all the commitments of professionalism and working with the buyer and working with the seller. And they, they want to do a good job with it. But we've had a bunch that, like you said, they said they did. They liked the idea of doing it. But when it came down to actually doing it, really just didn't follow through. And, uh, yeah. and it wasn't because we weren't coaching them how to do it, right? That's right. Um, I would say like the way that you bring people on board to your team is a big, a big, big thing. Um, you know, holding their feet to the fire on whatever that is, you know, for you. Um, you know, if you got a weekly meeting with them and, and it mm -hmm. schedules on the calendar, that meeting needs to happen. Right. I mean, if they don't show up, you need to get rid of them. So so that's been a big thing for you. Um, you know, anything else? Um, on, on the uh, on the production side of things, did did uh, did moving into this role that you're in right now, um, did it affect at all your personal production? And if so, you know what could somebody maybe expect similar to yours? So, um, in terms of production, you know, I, I can't really I can't say it's directly associated with uh, you know launching my group, but it really did impact how I felt about my production because I wanted more business. If I have more people to share it with, then I want more of it. And so I really did try to, I, I promoted the group. I launched, you know, some campaigns and, and I did get more business, but, uh, but at that time, then I didn't have. So one thing that I'm, I may have done somewhat well uh, is, and I say somewhat, <laughs> But I, I did, I had weekly meetings, I had coachings with um, my agents, and that's when we really kind of quickly, through that process, we would, we came to the mutual understanding that um, what they really thought they wanted to do wasn't what they wanted to do, and it wasn't a good fit for our team. So then when I started increasing my production, I didn't have agents anymore, <laughs> so you know, there I am just running, you know, as fast as I can with the ball that, that I tossed up. So, you know, it became um, a challenge in that way. But the other thing, going back to the point you made is when you're in production as an agent yourself, because I never got to a point where I was like, well, you know, I'm stepping out. I'm no longer boots on the ground. I don't need a transaction personally. I, I'm not there. I still need my own book of business mm -hmm. to support my family. So I'm a working agent as well. And when you're really trying to launch a team, and like you said, when you set a weekly meeting that you expect your people to be at, you have to be there too. Yeah. So 
it became this tug of war where I'm like, oh, wait, I have so much activity going on, but I'm not as free as I used to be to just go and do my own thing. I now have this team of people that I have to be committed to. I have to be available for. I have to take care of them and my book of business at the same time. So that sort of became a little bit of a challenge as well. Yeah, it kind of really forces you to kind of elevate your game a little bit. too. Oh, right? absolutely. Like, yeah. You learn real quick where your weaknesses are, you know, in your schedule or in your systems. And uh, and I, I would say, though, to people watching, you know, or listening to this, like, th this might sound scary. Like, oh, man, I'm going to get exposed and I'm going to have all these extra people now who are depending on me. But but to me, I, I enjoy the challenge. And I think. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, like, I, I like. Uh, and I've I've gained a lot of tremendous uh, a tremendous amount of like personal development and business knowledge from trying to figure out how to scale this thing up as as we grew. So um, so yeah. are there, does it create problems by having people on your team? Yes, but it's good problems to solve, and they're solvable problems, right? So so very so, much so. Yeah. So when you you know you get past the challenges or, you know, you can look at the challenges of it and that's a challenge for sure. But, but it, you're exactly right. It grew me. It grew me because when, you know, it's so funny when I'm by myself, I think, oh gosh, I don't know. What is the next thing I'm going to do? How do I have to go? Sometimes you don't really push yourself to figure out the next step or what should your day tomorrow look like? Or what should your goal for next month look like? But when you're managing a team, you have to have that for them, which means you also have to have it for yourself. So it really pushes you to do better and it grows you. And and when you know you have people counting on you, you're just going to do better. Yeah. Just most people, at least. Yeah, I agree. You know, and, and we were talking about this earlier today before we started recording. I mean, there might be a time where you're just getting your, your teeth kicked in for a little bit. You're just mm -hmm. you're overwhelmed. You're feeling like, what in the world did I do? I'd be better off just being a solo agent again. Uh, but typically... Uh, for most people, at some point, you kind of figure out how to get past that, right? You figure out, you know, okay, um, you know, I did lose some agents. Okay, what do I need to do different this next time? So, exactly. um, so that, that's one thing I wanted to hit on as well, um, because you've had, you've had some great like light bulb moments already, just you know, in the short period of time that you've been doing this. If you were going to go back today and and restart this thing, relaunch this thing. You know, what would you do differently now, knowing what some of the struggles have been uh, from getting your group up and going? Um, I, very number one, top of the list is I would really do a better job vetting the agents that I bring on board. Um, you know, like I said, I, I thought that I did. And, and it, you really have to work to decipher between somebody who ha has this vision and somebody who has a work ethic. Yeah. Um, and I'm very open to new agents. I, I wouldn't say that I won't take on new agents. I love new agents, but I'm, I'm going to be a lot more careful about new agents that I bring on because we all don't know what we're in for until we do it. So it is a little harder for a new agent to, you know, really prove themselves. But, um, but I think having a new agent who is truly, um, has some sort of, like professional work background because, and again, that's specific to my group because I do have, I, I really want to hold a professional image in the community and, and the clients we serve, but um, I'm looking for somebody who really has that type of work background and not somebody who's stepping into the workplace maybe for the first time. Yeah. Um, so doing a much better job of vetting the agents. And, um, and then one of the things I think I've worked it out now, but one of the things I struggled with is because branding needs to be consistent. I needed to have my agents be able to just plug in, you know, they need to plug in their headshot. You know, I have some parameters where they can do something specific to themselves, but otherwise all of the branding has to be prepared and ready for them to order their business cards, order their for sale signs, you know, everything has to be ready. So I think I have that down, but that was a real struggle the first time around is, oh, you need business cards and we need them to all look the same. Hold on. <laughs> Wait, yeah. I, okay, I got this. I got this. Yeah, it's it's little things like that you don't think about. And it's mm -hmm. like a thousand different decisions um, that, that that you know, have to be made um, that you, you really didn't think about as a solo agent. So, 
Uh, so I love it. Great, great, great insight. Um, you know, um, so you, you've, uh, you got in the business, um, you saw the billboard, you wanted to be that person, you got in the business, you got your group now. Um, where, what, what's the next big thing for you? Where do you see this thing going? Um, you know, as far as your vision goes, like what is the vision going forward from here? So, um, I am, it's funny you mentioned that I am back in, uh, I have the goal to grow the the team again, and I'm working with my current broker. My ultimate goal, which would be on the like the five year spectrum, is I do want an office in my location. Right now, where I'm at, it's a very quickly growing area, but it hasn't been established enough that you have like you know some of the major real estate uh, brokerages aren't quite here. So um, I I think I have some support from my broker to uh, grow the team and actually open doors at a location here in my area. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, it is exciting. Yeah. You're definitely on the right path. So uh, if anybody has any questions on here and would like to reach out to you personally, Kristen, what's the best way uh, for them to get in touch with you? I love phone calls and I know that might be really old school, but I love a conversation. My, um, I'm sure you're going to publish my phone number. So I would please give me a call. Sometimes the highlight of my day, and this is sort of why I really love and want to launch a team. The highlight of my day is being able to get a phone call and talk to somebody else and maybe lend a helping hand or, you know, give some sort of insight to anybody who's going through the same path. So I would love phone calls. You can also text me, email me. Of course, as a realtor, I have to be available by all forms of communication. So I'm available, but I do love a phone call. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and her, uh, uh, if you're trying to get in touch with her, I want to make sure I got the best email address for you. Kristen at ahcrealtor.com. That's right. Correct. That's an acronym and for Austin Hill Country, ahcrealtor.com. Okay. And phone number is? 512-947-0373. All right. Awesome. Yeah. You've contributed a whole lot. I, pr I really appreciate you coming on here. We yeah. don't hear enough from people who are, who are at that kind of uh, beginning level stages of growing a team or growing a brokerage. I think it's really, really important. Some of the things that you shared as far as some of the struggles you've had and light bulb moments that have gone off. So thank you so much for, uh, for being on here and thanks for sharing with our group today. Thanks, Phil. I can't wait to be back on to tell you all about how many agents I have. Sounds great. I'm looking next year. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to that as well. We'll see you soon. Bye.